got a song that uh, I hadn't sung here in a good while. You, I know all of you have heard me sing it before, but uh, Donald had mentioned this morning about doing Sweet Beulah Land. That Gene, this was one of Gene's favorite songs, and, and if, if I remember right, you asked me months ago to sing that song, didn't you? And I forgot about it. So I'm going to do this song for you tonight, Sweet Beulah Land. Be a great day. I always think about my brother when that son. My, my brother always has sang that since we were little. Would you believe it? And uh, I just love that old song. If you'll open your Bibles up to Psalm 136, Psalm 136. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight just about prayer. I don't know if any of you have seen any of your prayers answered here lately, but I surely have. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm so glad for it. 
You know, and, and when we look at this particular scripture here, it, it kind of speaks to us. It speaks to us about just how God answers those prayers. Psalm 136, verses 1 through 3. If you're able to stand, would you join me as we read God's holy word tonight? Psalm 136, we'll look at verse 1, and then we'll go through 3. This is what it says. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Did that skip two, or did I read two? I read two. Hmm. Felt like I only read two scriptures there. That shows you my brain ain't functioning tonight. We're going we're gonna to slap the preacher in the head. I'm going on. <laughs> Let us pray for Shirley tonight. <laughs> Father, I thank you, God. I thank you that I can be with this family. And Lord, read your word and know, Father, that you hear our prayers. That we're not just whistling Dixie, God, but Lord, we're speaking to the God of all creation. Oh, Lord, we ask you tonight that you would speak to our hearts. That, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your word would be revealed to us. That, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we, Father, would know truly more about you. For we ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. You may be seated. You know, so many people are feeling like when they're praying, they're just, just turning from the world. And then you have this other group of people that feel like when they're praying, it's just something in pie in the sky. Uh, I've had people actually say that all you're doing is just breathing air and you're wasting your time because there's never an answer to prayer. I believe one of the biggest problems is, is when people are praying is they're not truly seeking to see the answers to their prayers. Or when they do, then they step over. Some people say that when you're praying, that what you're trying to do is actually step out of reality of the situation that you're dealing with, basically being an ostrich sticking your head in the sand. But what we see is the Bible shows that prayer is reality. And as you look at this and you study Scripture, because the Scripture is supposed to give us encouragement. The Scripture is supposed to give us that boldness to understand that somebody else has been through things like we have. Now, if you take the time and you look in the Word, you're going to see a lot of things that you've been through. And I know it seems so hard because you say, well, my goodness, look, we're in the year 20, whatever, 2017, and, and how can the Bible relate to me? But the Bible has so many similar circumstances that deal with where people are at or in their lives if they were open to the Holy Spirit speaking to them and showing them the truth. See, the, the Bible takes and it shows the testimonies of people who've been there and done that, who've been through hard times and difficulty. So when you look at this Psalm 136, it's just testimony of answered prayer that people have experienced in their lives. So the exile had ended, and we're seeing where the people are going back home, and everything that they were going to needed repair. There was a lot of broken things, a lot of problems. So one of, they did, one of the things they did is they would get together and they'd read this particular scripture to give them uh, just get that encouragement to give them that boldness to know that you know what God's going to answer these prayers and it became one of the words that was used in the Passover in the New Year's time this is scriptures that they would read during these times see Psalm 36 136 is it's like a buoy this is like a buoy you throw out to somebody I don't know if you ever worked on one of the ships they, they have buoys around larger ships that are required by law and even in the smaller boats now they have these life preservers that if somebody falls into the water you can throw it out to them so that they can find safety and this is what this is this is something that you can throw out that you can give to somebody to give them encouragement if they're going through a difficult time if they're going through something that's hard see 26 times we see over and over repeated that steadfast God's steadfast love endures 26 times we see it spoken and how God had met them with these incredible promises and kept his word. So when it's talking to us right here, it's talking about, is there was actually a, a contemporary song that talks about how God's love endures, that it keeps going on. Now when you look at this scripture right here and, and you, you study that God's love endure, and then you look up that word loving kindness and you, you look up the Hebrew word for that, it's chesed. Now, what I find interesting when you look up the Hebrew of this, so in Chesed, what it means is, it, it, it means uh, in Hebrew the, the loving kindness, all right? But it also means shame or reproach. Did you know that? Just in the, the inflection of how somebody speaks that word is what it, the meaning is in the original language. So when you think about this, a church is either experiencing, they're either having love, this loving kindness that's being expressed in the church, or they're a shame or reproach to God Almighty. You see, when you look at these scriptures and, and you take this, 
this word serious, it starts dealing with your heart. And that's all I want to do. I just want to take tonight, and I want to deal with the loving kindness of God. You know, this morning as we were singing, we were talking about how God loves us. You know, God loves you. God loves us. And a lot of times when we're going through difficult times, we don't feel very loved. Because when you're out there and you feel beat up and stuff, and you feel like you're going through troubles and, and trials, you're saying like, ah, where's God at? When the whole time he's right there. So you look in verses 4 through 9. 4 through 9, this is what it says. It says, to who, to, uh, so we're going to read verses 4 through 9 right here. To him who alone does great wonders, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who made the heavens with skill, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who made the great lights, for his loving kindness is everlasting is everlasting the sun is ruled by day and for his loving kindness is everlasting and the moon and stars to rule by night for his loving kindness is everlasting so when somebody takes this and you start reading this particular scripture right here what you discover is that God is expressed in all the created order we had actually went through some scriptures not long ago talking about this same thing see the Hebrews knew that what God had created was good and a lot of times when people are going along in this world, especially in the cities and stuff, they're going along so fast that they're passing by the loving kindness of God. And they're saying, where is the loving God at? Where is the God of creation at? Now, we get expressed and see it all the time, whether it's the creeks, whether these trees, whether these hills. We get to see it shown all the time. But when you see this right here, the world regarded... Uh, takes this and, and they see just that grace and the mercy of God being expressed to the people. Because think about it. If you didn't have the timber that we have today, you wouldn't even see what you have built today. If we didn't have the vegetables that we have today, you wouldn't have the nourishment in your body. Everything is related to a loving God who knows the need of your body and your life. So when we see this, and, and with these Hebrews right here, as they're going through, and, and you see that they're, they're, they've been want, through wandering, they've been through slavery, they have been through the... the times of their lives where they were rebellious against God. They had even went through the exile. And what they're saying, with all these things, with every place that we've been at, whether it was wandering around in the wilderness for all those years, whether we were enslaved, whether we were uh, just going against God, His loving God kindness was being poured out upon us. I was expressing that to somebody today. I said, you know, when we were out there in sin, God loved us. He paid the price on Calvary, hang up on Calvary, even though we turned away from him and rejected him. He said, listen, I paid the price. Now the question is, is we'll accept that. It will take it as a free gift from God himself. He says, I'll take you, I'll, I'll give and deliver you from the bondage. And see, that's what the Hebrews said. They knew that their deliverer lived and he was taking care of them in every aspect of their lives. A lot of times when we're in troubles, when we're in trials and tribulations, we don't see the loving kindness of God because we close our eyes to it and we listen to the lies of Satan who says nobody loves you, nobody cares about you, and nobody understands where you're at. And what God says is I see your location in the midst of the trials and the tribulations and I'll be there with you. So when we look at verses 10 through 15, look at what this says right here. Verses 10 through 15. To him who smote the Egyptians in their firstborn, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And brought Israel out from their midst, for his loving kindness is everlasting. With strong hand and outstretched arm, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his loving kindness is everlasting. But he overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, for his loving kindness is everlasting. When you start looking at these scriptures right here, what we discover is the loving kindness of God, <laughs> it, it's wrote out in all of history, and we see it recorded forever. They saw God as one who had delivered them when they were in needs. Now, a lot of times when we ask for testimonies and stuff, we pass over things that we've been through because we say, it's really not that big a deal. It really didn't matter in the first place. 
You know, and sometimes, like, you know, I know Brother Charlie, he's always been so kind to remind us of what he went through with his motorcycle accident because he doesn't want to forget what God has done in his life. And a lot of times, we need to do the same thing. And this is why this is recorded in the Scripture, so that the people will know that God was with them even in smoke the firstborn of Pharaoh's, uh, all the people of, of the Pharaoh, because he was going to take the Hebrews out from under that bondage of slavery right there. So he, it says in the Scripture that he destroyed the army in that sea, the, the Pharaoh's army in the sea. Well, when you're looking at this, what you're seeing is the enemy is being smoked because they're trying to overcome God's people. Now, me and you are God's people. And whether you realize it or not, we've been through some situations where I would say it's like the Red Sea. Maybe when you look back in the history of your life and you see where you've been there, you, you've seen the pharaohs coming against you. You've seen the Red Sea that was spread up. You've seen the impossibilities of escape. And you've experienced God's hand before yourself. You know, even as a child, when I was a little child, I had to get shots multiple times a week because I had a blood disorder. Would you believe it? This is back there. They gave me a shot. They, it's not even legal to give it no more. This is how dangerous this shot is. But if, I would not, if they would not have had that shot, guess what would have happened to me? I would have died. I didn't have these immunities in my body. And it goes all the way back. So I took a lot of shots when I was a kid, but it was miraculous that I went through this. Then I looked through it in my life, just like I was saying this morning. When that tree fell down in front of me, I don't take that for granted that that thing exploded because it was rotten when we hit it. Because if it had been solid, my family could have been injured right there. God's mercies are great. God's mercies are wonderful. The thing is, is that when we share, we know one of the problems is with, with our younger people is they don't recognize the hand of God delivering them out of the situation. They don't see where God has been through, been through these situations with them. Now, they knew, the Hebrews knew that they did not deliver themselves. They didn't have the abilities. They didn't have the army. They didn't have the weapons. So they knew it, it had to be expressed not only to themselves, but to the people around them what God had done in the most difficult of times. Now, think about in your life. When you look at your life and you start comparing it, where was your Red Sea at? Where was those times where you've seen Pharaoh's army encircling your camp? When is the last time you saw, you saw or, or you knew that you were in bondage to something and God took you and delivered you from that situation? See, this is what this scripture is doing. It's giving the testimony so that the children's children's children all the way to you can know the promises of God are true. Do we believe the promises of God? See, what, what happens is we get where we, we, we pray in such a, a sissy way, we don't believe it's going to take place. We don't believe that God can take and deliver us out of the mouth of the lion. It, we're in the den right now, the lion's den of this country, this world, and it looks like everything's coming, and the only way is to see the miracle of God take place, to see his hand move. See, in all the difficult situations that you may be in or you're going to come to sooner or later, you either trust in the power of prayer or you trust in the power of self. And the power of self is the pride that rises up to keep you chained to the world. When God has given you the power of all creation itself at your disposal by praying. It says when we pray, the very, the very gates of hell are shaken. It says that the mountains can be moved. It says these trees can be dispersed. It says all these difficult things, all these troubles, the miracle is right there. Have faith and believe. Have faith that God is more than able to deliver thee. Look, me and you wouldn't have made it. I guarantee you, you may not speak it out your mouth, but I am confident there's people sitting in here tonight that would not have made it to where they're at today unless God delivered them, unless God rescued them. In verses 16 through 22, look what it says. To him who led his people through the wilderness, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who smote great kings, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And slew mighty kings, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Sahan, king of the Amorites, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And Og, king of Bashan, 
for his loving kindness is everlasting. And gave their land as a heritage for his loving kindness is everlasting. Even a heritage to Israel, his servant, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Now remember, this particular uh, psalm is being read. It, it was sung. And they would have people that would come and they, they'd read and they would sing this particular scripture right here. So what you do is when you're looking at this, what we discover is the loving kindness of a God exists in the entrances and the exits of our lives. No matter what's taking place right here. He led them through the wilderness and they had never been there before. They didn't know their way around. They're, they didn't know how they was going to feed uh, the, all the Hebrew people. They didn't know how they were going to survive. And God shown them the way and led them the whole way. He struck down all these kings, and one of the things, you know, some of these kings, are, uh, their names are so hard to pronounce that they, they couldn't even pronounce it, but they wanted to make sure it was recorded right here. Some, they, they just recorded these, these states of places right here. So as they were going through this, these armies that were organized and in a position where it would be scary to us. And I don't know if y'all been watching this, and I know America, we're, we're pretty bold to be pretty brave and everything. And with North Korea, which has been going on for all these years, uh, most people aren't scared. I, I've talked to young people, and they don't remember anything from like the 60s and stuff when they had all those uh, different uh, nuclear bomb uh, practices in the schools, all the public schools uh, were out. Where I was from, in Livingston Parish, would have all these different practices because we might be under a Soviet attack or a Chinese attack. And when they had the Cuban miss, Missile Crisis and, and we were in the midst of trouble, people looked past this and they don't understand. There was multitudes of thousands of people that were praying that God would intervene. We take all this for granted and we have bravado of, of what it means to, to, to saber rattle dealing with North Korea because we say, oh, well, they, they can't reach us. Let me tell you something. When you understand that we need to be praying that God will intervene on our behalf, on, on our nation's behalf, on our leader's behalf, and that he'll watch over us. And when you look at these scriptures and you understand that God was taken and walking them through the, the doors of, of safety and security and, and taking them out there to positions and showing them the way through and the way out of situations, and then relate your life. A lot of times, so we see this going over there with North Korea, but look, look at all these things. Even if it's just right here. Even if you never considered anything else, how many times has God taken us to that position, uh, uh, another job, or he's led us to somebody that we need to meet to be able for, for the blessings of our lives? A lot of times, you don't understand where you're at today because you don't understand where you came from. But some of you have seen God's path where it led you from this place to this place to this place. And now it makes sense as you look at it because you know that God provided for you the whole way, the safety, the security, and the blessings. You know, Brother Robert Bateman had shared with me his testimony. And he talks about how when he was lost, I mean, he didn't get saved as a child or anything. How old was you when you got saved, Brother Robert? 47, 47 years old. He's out there, and at one time in his life when he's, he's, he's going frogging with some old boys and stuff like this, and he almost drowns, and, and God showed him something, and, and it stuck with him all these years. He remembers where he was at, and he knows where he's at. Some, he started working on a church before he was even saved, and God saved him, and now he's a deacon in the church. Can you imagine? 47? I'm I'm 52. I'm not much older than what he was when he made a decision for Jesus Christ. And if you meet him, you'd say, well, he's been this way all his life. No, he ain't. He may have been a good person, but he wasn't a born-again believer that changed his, his direction and changed everything. Look, look at where he's at today. God took it and he led him his path. If I could get anything with, with the younger people or, or any age group, is to get them to see that God is directing us if we just let him lead us. When we see and we look at this scripture right here, you know, there's, there's so many people that are living in fear. They live in fear for their children. They live in fear, uh, you know, how am I going to make retirement? How am I ever going to survive? Uh, they, 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 some people are concerned about their safety and whether there's going to, you know, they're going to get sick. And, and all this, all this flowing through, all of this is this, this madness of society today that says that God does not exist. God's steadfast love always endures for the children of God. The people who will get down and who will pray and say, Lord, have thine own way. Show me your way, Father. 
direct my path, O oh Lord. See, what society says is that when you do that, you're just silly. And you're grasping at straws. But what you're actually doing is grabbing the hand of the master who created the entire universe. And when you grab his hand and you let him lead you, then you make better decisions. Robert was, they was in a boat frogging. I can't picture him frogging. <laughs> can't even picture him fishing. I didn't even know he had no hobbies at one time. He don't do it no more. He's sitting in there. <laughs> How big was that motor you said was on back that little bateau? So the, the, the boat, and, and I remember because it sticks with my brain. See, this is how this sticks with people. It sticks with my brain. He said, there's a little bit of the sideboard sticking out. And they're going down the river, and of course they catch a wave. And you had boots on, right, Brother Robert? He had hip boots or something like that? Just rubber boots on. You know, anybody who knows about rubber boots, they grabbed his feet and they sunk him down. All in the blink of an eye. All because of a decision. And I don't think he was doing everything right that night, if I'm not mistaken. He, he wasn't quite doing everything right. A lot of times, you don't realize how your testimony has stretched to younger people because he talked to me how God showed him stuff right there on the doorstep. If he had died that moment, he said he had went to hell. But then he came to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. See, God took him somewhere and showed him a better way. And he made a decision to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Look, we discover when you look at these scriptures, look at verses 23 and tw through 25. Look at what this says right here. Verse 23 through 25. It says, Who remembered us in our low estate? For his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the God of God. For his loving kindness ever, is everlasting. Let's see. Let me go back. Okay, 24. And has, I thought so. And has rescued us from our adversaries for his loving kindness is, ever, uh, is everlasting. And look at verse 26 now. We're going to go on to 26. Give thanks to the God of heaven for his loving kindness is everlasting. When you study these scriptures right here, what we do is the love of God endures forever. You know, that's one thing I was telling uh, to my little sister this morning. I said, you know, one thing about God's love is when you give your heart to him, he never throws you away. Even if you made mistakes, even if you've done difficult things in your life, and here, here's what he says, I love you. And his love is very personal. You know, uh, we were talking, you know, people say today, I love pizza, and, and I love so-and-so. And, and I was telling somebody, I said, you know, when we were in high school, people just say, I love you, I love you all the time. But was that really true love? The kind of love that God expresses to us is all eternal. So what the psalmist does is he reminds us, that he says, I want you to remember. Remember God's love. Remember how much he cares for you and what's going on. Remember the times that he rescued you. Now, maybe you didn't have a testimony like Brother Robert does right there, but I bet you somewhere in your life you were rescued from something. Maybe it wasn't from a place where you were about to perish physically, but I guarantee you were going to spiritually perish. Maybe you were about to make a decision that was going to affect you for a long, long time to come. And God got a hold of you and changed your direction. You know what? God comes in and he feeds us and he takes us and he reminds us just how much he cares for us. And he uses personal words. It's not just general words. He speaks to us personally. When he, hang, when he was hanging on Calvary, he was looking us in the eyes because he was looking into the future and he was looking at who he was going to pay the price for. And he says, I love you. You, ma you matter. See, when we understand this and we know that our needs are, uh, are, are going to be met no matter what takes place because God's made a promise. He says, my children won't go hungry without bread. He says, I take care of the birds. I take care of the lilies of the field. He says, surely I'll take care of you. When you understand those kind of things and you relate it, it becomes more than a religious kind of wordage. It becomes so real and you become satisfied and calm and knowing that my God reigns. I was reading this thing about a heathen now. I was reading this little article about Truman Capote. Now, Truman Capote was a heathen. 
and he was a writer. I know many of y'all know him because he, he wrote some books and did some movies back there in the 1950s and everything. But this guy, his life was haunted with all these difficulties and troubles. He was depressed, and every single night, this guy would have a conversation with an imaginary Siamese twin. And he would say, he'd say, let's pray to his Siamese twin. And what he's, he'd tell him, he says, let's pray like we did when we were children. And this is what he'd say, they would, <laughs> him and this imaginary twin. Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Then he'd take and he'd speak to himself. He'd say, good night, I love you. Then he'd take his imaginary Siamese twin, and this, the twin would respond to him. And he said, the, the twin would say, I love you better. He says, you better because all we have is each other to the grave. Now, I don't know how it speaks to you. It speaks to me. Because I was thinking, what a tragedy. What a tragedy when somebody doesn't believe that God loves them. His twin would say, go over. He says, listen, all we have is each other. When me and you have a relationship with God Almighty, see, God's love isn't on how good I am, how special I am, because I'm a preacher I'm his child. And he says, my children will not go without. I'm not trying to give you some kind of sermon that deals with you getting rich. I'm trying to give you a sermon that will give you the calmness and assurance of knowing no matter what takes place in your life, God loves you and he's never going to leave you. If you could bow your head tonight. We don't have no music, but we got prayer. So tonight, let's pray. No matter what you're going through, no matter the situation in your family, in your home, those who surround you, the God of all creation knows where you're at and what's taking place. And you matter. So even as you share in your heart, because it says in the Word that He knows the moans and the groans of our heart, you can express it. Even if you couldn't express it verbally, you can express it to God. And He says, it matters. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for these families here tonight. I ask blessings upon them. I pray, God, that you will, Lord, watch over their families. Each one of us go through things, Father, but I pray that the Word of God always reminds us as we take and study it, Father, that you lead us through. You lead us through the wilderness. You lead us through these trials and tribulations. Whether someone's having trouble from their marriages, from their health issues, from their finances, to some kind of relationship with relatives, to, Lord, anything. It matters to you. And Father, as we seek your face and seek your will, that Lord, you'll show us the answer. So I pray tonight, God, that you watch over these homes, watch over these families, and that Lord, they'll feel your very presence. And as they read the word of God, I pray, Father, that it speaks to their heart. And that Lord, that they can see the answers. And Lord, as we see your deliverance, as we see your salvation, as we see your help and your hope, I pray, Father, that we receive it with gladness. And as we go about our lives, that we give it in testimonies to others, realizing that it makes such a difference, that we remind people of just how loving you are. So, Father, we ask that you be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen.